How are you doing, everybody? I am here to tell you about a movie that you absolutely need to see, Glass Onion. Written and directed by Ryan Johnson and starring Daniel Craig, Edward Norton, Janelle Monet, and a bunch of other very talented people. The full title on the promotional material is Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, because apparently the studio thought we were too stupid to realize it takes place in the same universe, even though it is also written and directed by Johnson and stars Daniel Craig in the same friggin' role. Death on the Nile wasn't subtitled A Murder on the Orient Express Mystery, so what gives? But anyway, Ed Norton plays rich bastard Miles Braun, who has invited a bunch of his old friends to his private island, which he calls the Glass Onion, named after the bar where they used to hang out. It's just him, five other dysfunctional people, a couple of their plus ones, and Detective Benoit Blanc. Braun is hosting a little murder mystery party, and he's the victim, and it's up to his guests to figure out who killed him and how. But of course the whole thing isn't real, no one's actually getting murdered. Or are they? This is the second of what I hope will be several whodunit movies featuring Detective Blanc. The first one, of course, was Knives Out, which I very much enjoyed, and with Glass Onion, Ryan Johnson has done it again. The story is incredibly well done. It does a great job of introducing all the principal characters, setting up the murder mystery, giving pretty much everyone a motive for killing the guy. And just when you think you know where the story's going, it throws you a curveball. And another, and another, and it just keeps on going. I do not exaggerate when I say this is a storytelling masterclass. And I do appreciate that this movie, unlike most movies set in the present day, does not simply pretend the pandemic never happened. It is actually part of the story, and they even get some pretty good jokes out of it. Kate Hudson's character, Bertie J, shows up to the party wearing a completely useless mesh mask because she is a total airhead. And when we first see Blanc in this movie, he is in the bathtub, which is apparently where he has spent most of lockdown, playing a game of Among Us with, I shit you not, Natasha Lyonne, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Angela Lansbury, and Stephen Sondheim. There has got to be an entire ass documentary of how that scene came together. And that scene, in addition to being pretty awesome, gives you an idea of how long ago they filmed this because two of those four people are dead. Sondheim's been dead for a year. And yet, it still feels very timely. I can only conclude Johnson can see into the future. Or society just hasn't progressed all that much in the last few years. It's one of the two. All of these characters are delightfully weird. Daniel Craig is, of course, back as Detective Benoit Blanc. I am so glad he gets to keep playing this character. I'm pretty sure he is as well. Just so much fun to watch and endlessly charming. He's great. Norton's character, Miles Braun, has become unspeakable speakably wealthy despite having very little in the way of intelligence or any notable skills. Of course, this is a fictional story, so any resemblance this character has to an actual person is legally coincidental. And then we have Braun's friends. There's Catherine Hahn as an ambitious politician who's running for governor and certainly not corrupt in any way. Leslie Odom Jr. as a scientist trying to make Braun's crazy ideas a reality and really should tell his boss off once in a while, but he just does not have the balls to do it. Hudson is a fashion designer and, as mentioned previously, a total airhead with no self-awareness whatsoever. And my god, she plays that character entirely too well. Dave Batista plays a men's rights YouTuber, and his character is every bit as douchey as you would expect from that description. And he carries a gun on him 24-7, which is conveniently holstered in a way that it points directly at his dick. You know, for safekeeping. And he's got a hot girlfriend about half his age, because of course he does. I don't know if Batista necessarily has a lot of range as an actor, but he can be really good given the right role, and he absolutely nailed this character. But the real star of the show is Janelle Monet as Andy Brand, Miles' former business partner, and no, they did not part ways amicably. I would honestly go so far as to say Monet should be in consideration for an Oscar for this movie. They were that good, and... Unfortunately, I don't know how much more detail I can give you because to give almost any information about this character away beyond what I've already told you would spoil the entire movie, I think. But suffice to say, Monet has to give a very versatile performance, and that's as far as I'm going to go. I cannot recommend this movie enough. If you have the time to see it in theaters during its very limited run, 
do so if you don't have time or if you just don't feel like going to a theater. It will be on Netflix very soon, and you absolutely should check it out one way or another. If you don't have Netflix, I would consider getting it for this movie. It's that good. If you like Knives Out, you will definitely like this. If you did not like Knives Out, then... I don't get you. It will be interesting to see how this holds up on repeated viewings. I don't know if it's going to have the same impact now that I know everything that happens, but we'll see. And that's all I have to say about Glass Onion. Till next time, take care.